What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. Welcome back to the channel. It's big dogs got to eat. BDGE Fantasy Football. I am Nicholas. We're doing a quick reaction video today because we heard that Melvin Gordon's ass is sitting out. If he don't get a new contract, he demanded a trade if he does not get that contract. So we want to break down this, what's happening in this situation from a fantasy football perspective, right? What it means for Melvin Gordon, because he's a perennial first round pick, someone who's been an elite RB1 when he's been on the field for the last few years. Where you should be looking to draft him right now, what's going to happen if this lingers? You know, we've seen this with Le'Veon Bell. Do we think the Chargers are going to give him that fat contract? You know, we've seen some stuff with Gurley. We've seen some stuff with Bell. What does that mean for the backfield? Austin Eckler, Justin Jackson, who do you want to be targeting? Does it mean anything for Phillip Rivers in the passing game? Potential landing spots for Melvin Gordon. Let's get into the video. Make sure that if you enjoy the video, you find it valuable, informative, you hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're doing everything 2019 fantasy football all off season. I love y'all for uh, coming to the channel. Let's get it. Okay, so we know this. Let's break down the big facts first. Melvin Gordon is on his rookie contract. He's going to make $5.5 million this year. But he sees what guys like Todd Gurley and Le'Veon Bell did, right? Le'Veon Bell went to the ends of the earth. He sat out for the entire season so that he got that fat contract from the Jets. And we know that that contract is for four years, $52 million. Total guaranteed, $27 million. The Rams gave Gurley literally the worst contract I've ever seen. $45 million guaranteed to this running back who has arthritis in his knee. Maybe he holds up this year. That knee ain't going to hold up for three, four more years. I mean, he was 23 at the time, whatever, 24 when he signed the contract. So maybe it looked good. Melvin Gordon, he's 26 years old. I'm not sure what kind of contract he's looking for. If he's looking for a four or five year deal, uh, he is probably going to have trouble getting that because he's a little bit older. But Le'Veon Bell got a four year deal. So we'll have to see. The Jets are also, <clears throat> do I think they get a deal done? Do I think he gets traded? I think they give him an extension. <clears throat> Look how the team is broken up right now. It's Phillip Rivers in his final probably two, maybe three years in the NFL. That's their window for the Super Bowl. They're not going to draft a rookie next year who puts them in Super Bowl contention. So they have this small window with a very good team in which they can get to the Super Bowl. Their offense no longer runs through Phillip Rivers, though. They are not a high-volume passing offense. They have good weapons. He's going to be efficient, but he doesn't throw the ball 40, 45 times a game like he may have used to. That offense runs through Melvin Gordon. And I know running backs don't matter in the NFL. They are very replaceable for the most part. That is true when you're not talking about a workhorse guy. And we saw what happened with Le'Veon Bell, right? Le'Veon Bell sits out the entire year. James Conner steps into his place and dominates and is actually more efficient on a per-touch basis. I'm not here to argue whether or not the defense had to change their game plan, whatever. We're just saying that it was, it, you know, his production was replaceable with James Conner coming in. The argument I would make to that is because James Conner is a, a workhorse NFL back, right? The guy is big. He's over 220 pounds, so he can handle the same workload that Le'Veon Bell did. When you look at what the Chargers have behind Melvin Gordon, it's Justin Jackson and it's Austin Eckler. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to get excited and be like, Justin Jackson's time to shine and be the featured workload back here is now if Melvin Gordon sits out. Here's the problem with that. But I would say, you know, the mo most of you would probably agree Austin Eckler is not big enough to carry the ball 20 times a game, not big enough or whatever to get a, a big workload. And, you know, realistically, he hasn't proven to be able to hold that. So you look at Eckler and you're like, he's small. He can't handle that. I I've got news for you, though. Justin Jackson is six pounds lighter than Austin Eckler is. Eckler is 199 pounds. Justin Jackson is 193 pounds with a zero width, zero width. I don't know if that's even how you would fucking say it. A zero percentile BMI. So you might look at Justin Jackson and you see, oh, six foot tall. He's ready to be a workhorse. He is 193 pounds with zero BMI. He is not built to handle a workhorse role either. The Chargers are not going to be able to get to the Super Bowl using Justin Eckler and Jackson one-two punch to get there because their offense runs too much around the running back. Like I know there have been times like the Patriots, right? They use one, two, three up. They use like a seven-person punch in the running back position to get to the Super Bowl, but their offense runs through Brady and that short passing game. That's not how the Chargers offense runs. Their offense runs through Melvin Gordon being the featured back there. So I think that they're going to realize this and I think that they're going to pay him. What they should probably do is give him a fat contract for the next three years while they have that Rivers window there, right? Have Melvin Gordon locked up. So maybe that is a lot of money. Maybe it is a lot of guaranteed money, but don't put it in the four or five year range like we're seeing Le'Veon Bell and Todd Gurley get. 
do a little lower, right? Give him three years. By the time that contract is up, he's only 26 right now. He's in the prime still of his career. By the time that's up, he'll be 29. That's when you want to get rid of him and not give him that contract. But had they had someone behind him, had they drafted someone with workhorse size, or had they signed someone else through free agency that could really take on that role, or at least be a very good complement to the other two who are much smaller in size, then I would say, okay, maybe they can replace his production with a three-headed punch. But I don't think they're going to be able to use the same game plan that they've used successfully for the last year or so without Melvin Gordon there. So I think they're going to realize that. I think they're going to come to their senses. If this does linger on, like we saw with Le'Veon Bell last year, you know, that could be a problem for fantasy purposes. Right now in best ball, if he starts dropping, Melvin Gordon starts dropping anywhere past like the sixth, seventh, eighth pick where I normally take him, I'm, I'm, that's a screaming value because in my head, I think that he's going to resign and I think he's going to get that contract extension. So we'll have to see what happens. There might be tons of reports that come out in the next couple of days as you watch this that are counter arguments to whatever I'm saying. And maybe they are in a stalemate, whatever. Melvin Gordon, I believe he's going to sign that contract. So if there's any sort of value you're getting on him, because he's an elite fantasy running back when he's on the field. Last year, points per game wise, only Barkley and Gurley averaged more fantasy points per game. He's top three when he's on the field. I want him at value wherever I can get him. If he ends up sitting out, whatever, right? That happens. Um, would you rather have Eckler? Would you rather have Jackson? I would much rather have Eckler. You know, I've talked about Eckler on my channel multiple times. Over the last two years, he has been a top five most efficient running back in yards per attempt, yards per rush, yards per reception, breakaway run rate. So his percentage of runs over 15 plus yards. The guy is an absolute beast in terms of efficiency. I don't think he'll get 20 touches. What I think it does is move him from an eight to 11 touch guy with Melvin Gordon there to a 12 to 15 touches and 12 to 15 touches from a very efficient running back is fantasy gold that you're going to get very late in your draft. So Eckler was a guy I was preaching, you know, uh, weeks ago in some of my like later round upside guy kind of videos, right? And if you've missed any of that, if you're new to the channel, again, you can go check out the channel. If you're enjoying the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. I like Eckler more than I like Jackson. Does that mean I'm fading Jackson? No, by no means. I would like to have a piece of this backfield. If you're getting either of these guys at value, you know, later in drafts, um, I, I'm fine investing in either of those guys. But again, I think Melvin Gordon will be back. So I'm not going to start jumping the gun and, and picking Eckler and Jackson in the seventh, eighth round right now until we know more. It's very possible that, you know, it starts leading into it. And if we get to the point where it's like August, right? And maybe mid-August, late August, where people are drafting like they did with Bell, I'm sure a lot of you guys learned your lesson on that and you'd rather stay away from the contract thing because we see these running backs are serious about their money and they should be for good reason. Yo, they take a beating. They get beat up every single week. They don't get paid accordingly in terms of how much you know, production comes from them compared to the entire team and the money that they're actually getting. You have guys like fucking Paul Richardson on $50 million contracts when Melvin Gordon is getting paid, you know, $5 million a year. But he is the entire, like a very big piece of that offense. So I do not fault them whatsoever for trying to get their money. So if we do see him sit out, it's, it's possible. It's very, very possible. We literally just saw Le'Veon Bell do it. Uh, in terms of what it means for the rest of the offense fantasy, I'm not really looking into it as like, oh, okay, now this means Philip Rivers is going to pass the ball 20 more times a game. Maybe it's like three more passes a game. You could look into that however you want to. If anything, I would say maybe this is a good thing for Hunter Henry because I expect him to be super involved in the red zone. And Melvin Gordon is super involved in the red zone, obviously. A lot of rushing touchdowns, a lot of receiving touchdowns down by the goal line. So maybe a little less come to Gordon's way if he's not on the field, obviously. Simple mathematics more to Hunter Henry. So slight boost to Hunter Henry, but I think anytime you're going to use this analysis as, you know, a huge positive for those guys, it's, it's very much a reach. In terms of landing spots for Melvin Gordon, right? He said he wants to be traded if he doesn't get the contract extension. Only spot I could think of that really comes to mind is Tampa Bay. You know, they don't have anything there. They have Peyton Barber, they have Ronald Jones. Ronald Jones was miserable last year. Yeah, there were reports of him getting better, but he, I mean, he's not a workhorse. Um, Peyton Barber has good size. I think he's the best value in that backfield, but Melvin Gordon would obviously immediately come in there and make all those running backs. And I know a lot of people like Bruce Anderson, whatever. He'd make all those guys redundant and would take over the workhorse role in an offense that should be on paper, very high scoring, right? So it's, it's almost a similar situation to uh, LA, probably a worse offensive line, but worse defense. So, you know, offense, they're going to be throwing the ball a lot. And I think he'll end up with a lot of receptions, but Tampa Bay is a landing spot. I'm thinking of other spots, maybe like Miami, uh, maybe Houston. I doubt uh, Houston seems pretty fucking happy with Lamar Miller and Deontay Foreman. They didn't do anything really through for agency or through the draft. So that tells you, I mean, they weren't obviously expecting Melvin Gordon's trade window to open up and that's why they didn't draft anybody, um, you know, early on, or at least that's someone that's going to compete for the spot. So, I mean, I would say like Houston and Miami, but Miami's in like total rebuild mode. So it seems really dumb for them to invest a lot of money into the running back position. Um, when they have tons of other pieces that they're going to need to figure out. 
later on. So the only spot I could really see is Tampa Bay. If he were to end up in Tampa Bay, I would still, I would probably draft him where he is going in fantasy drafts right now. Like he would be, I don't even think he would move in my rankings, to be honest with you. Right now in my rankings, I have him, I believe, at the number five spot overall, right behind the top four, that tier one running back, Barkley, Zeke, C-Mac, Kamara. I'm not sure if it's in that order. I just kind of named him off the top of my head. But I think Melvin Gordon is right there. He's in the second tier behind them just because the injury concerns are a little bit, you know, there. And that's another reason why, you know, the Chargers might not budge on the contract because he's been someone that has had a little bit of trouble, you know, proving durability. He's not, no major concerns in the NFL in terms of like, you know, torn ACL and so, sophomore season or whatever, but he's missed multiple games in three of the four seasons. So, you know, do you want to invest heavily into not an old, but an older-ish running back? He's not 24, he's 26, who has proven to have a little bit of durability issues. Um, so again, th- this the contract extension, I think it'll get itself sorted out, but it's very possible that it doesn't. Uh, if he goes to Tampa Bay, still top six pick in my opinion. Doesn't really move anything for me. If he goes elsewhere, I'll probably make another video kind of breaking that down. And uh, and that's really all I got for you today. So I hope that was information. I hope that kind of caught you up on the whole Melvin Gordon contract situation. I hope I hope the man gets his money. I hope he gets paid. I hope he fucking balls out this year because I just picked him in uh, one of my startup dynasty drafts at the 111 spot. So I'm going to need my mans to get his ass on the field. Simple as that. We're out of here. And if you want all my rankings... They're available on BigDogsDraftGuide.com. We got the number one draft guide out there right now to help you for your 2019 fantasy football season. Go smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I love y'all, and I am so far out of here. Peace.